Good morning, my name is Marty Martinez and I am the Chief of Health and Human Services for the city. And on behalf of Mayor Walsh and our administration, thank you all for being here with us uh, this morning. Um, I'm excited to be here to uh, bring forward the next step in some of the work that we've done with the release of our prevention report and strategic plan. Um, I cannot start without thanking Mayor Walsh, who you'll hear from, for making this work a priority for all of us in the city and ensuring that we have the resources we need to move this work forward. His leadership and that of the Mayor's Office of Recovery Services and Director Jen Tracy, who you also hear from, has made today a reality. And Health and Human Services and the work that we're doing across the Health Commission as well um, is prioritizing these efforts, and so we're excited to be here with you. We also want to thank Blue Cross Blue Shields and Massachusetts Foundation and Mass General Hospital for partnering with the city, who you'll hear from, for supporting this important work. Um, the report marks an, a, a strong commitment from the community to understand the drivers of youth substance use disorders. As the mayor has said in the past, uh, the youth in Boston are not only our future, but they're, they're our leaders today. Um, and understanding that we have a responsibility to provide all young people the opportunities they need to thrive in our community and ensure that our resources are meeting that need. This uh, proposal, this plan, should I say, is going to create a strategic roadmap for us to accomplish many of these things and to ensure that we're thinking about equity and equality with respect to all the challenges that young people face in our community. With the support of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts Foundation and MGH, the city with all of you as partners have worked hard to create this localized study that looks at these issues in the community. Um, so many of you here have been part of this study and part of this process. Raise your hand if you've been part of this work either through the advisor committee or focus groups. Um, this tells us a lot about the community and who's here today. It tells us a lot about the needs that we're trying to address and the role that CBOs and community organizations are working towards. The city's gone great lengths to make sure that we can tackle the opioid epidemic, tackle substance use disorders and the issues that are impacting our community. Um, but part of that is also understanding that prevention is part of the equation. Lots of times we think about recovery, we think about treatment, um, all vitally important things, but we forget that the path starts with prevention. And we forget the resources that are there, not intentionally, but because we get focused on the other pieces. And so this is part Part of that effort to ensure that we're thinking and prioritizing prevention and that we're working to ensure that we put those pieces in place that will help us get to where we need to go. This plan has created our, um, a sort of a set of recommendations, which I'll hear more about, that categorize us in things that are around city-owned, things that city, the city will take ownership up and move, city-led, which means we'll provide support and connect and, and create pathways for, and then city catalyze, which means help, sometimes means get out of the way, um, but it really means how do we work together. This plan is going to help us sort of do that and create recommendations, but most importantly, it's going to make sure that we prioritize this work. You know, one of the things coming into this role, as many of you I've known here for, for many years, but I've only been in this current role for uh, six and plus months. And one of the things coming into this role that I've been most proud of is the work that the city's done, not only to focus on these issues, not only to prioritize them, but to tackle what I think is one of the biggest challenges, and that's the stigma of talking about these issues, about breaking down the silos and being sure that when we want to address these issues around substance use disorders, that we're not afraid to do them. And none of that would be possible without the support and the leadership um, of our great Mayor Marty Walsh. Please help me in welcoming Mayor Marty Walsh. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chief Martinez. Uh, I want to thank uh, everyone behind me. You're going to hear from everyone in a minute. Um, thank them for their great work. I want to thank Dr. Slavin uh, from Mass General uh, for his commitment uh, in, in, in this, with this issue that's so important. Uh, I want to thank the providers out here. I see Father Joe White. Thank you, Father Joe. Uh, for, he's a spiritual leader in the city of Boston and some, somebody who, uh, who was picked by the Cardinal to, to lead the effort of, of recovery in the, in the, in the Archdiocese of Boston. Uh, John McGeehan from the Gavin Foundation and so many other, Kay Walsh and so many other folks here. I shouldn't have done that because I'm getting to have to introduce everyone now. Um, <laughs> just about everyone in here, this room, thank you. Um, we're talking, I was thinking um, over the last couple of weeks, we're talking about uh, when I was a kid growing up, we were, some of us in this room, kids growing up, uh, there was a big prevention war on drugs, uh, and, and the motto was just say no. Um, and what that what that slogan did was lock a lot of people up. 
there was really no full understanding of addiction, particularly when it came to young people. Uh, there was no understanding of why young people picked up in the very beginning. A lot of it was thought, the people thought it was peer pressure. They didn't think it was anything other than that. Um, the results were uh, not fewer people using drugs, but communities targeted uh, and not feeling supported. And that, that was the result of that effort. Uh, and not to be critical of the past, but that's what people thought. Uh, the conversation around opioids has been much better. Most people accept it as a disease and, a treat and in, in need of treatment, something that is really important for the young people in this room that are here today. You already know this, but let your friends know this is a disease, uh, and this disease could be in any one of us. Uh, but in some ways, uh, we've changed um, this disease, and, and it's color-coded. Opioids are not only a white problem, they're a black problem, they're a Latino problem, they're an Asian problem. They go across, as we know, across all races. Uh, all economic means. Uh, it goes across all ages, something that, that's something no one's immune from, from addiction, and that's important for us to talk about it. Uh, we need to be aware of the biases at work here. Uh, we have to be intentional about, t about, about equity, uh, and whereas um, we have to make sure that we continue to look at where the, where the symptoms are, where our resources go, and how do we truly uh, address the issue of substance disorder. This plan takes us in a whole new direction. It looks at the reality of young people's lives and the reality of most of the youth we serve are youth of color. It looks at specific challenges uh, and traumas that young people face. What substance abuse they are taking, what substance they are taking, what's working to help them, and what can we do better. My hope is that it's a historical turning point. I'm hoping that. 30 years from now, somebody's not standing at this podium and saying that what they did in 2018 was nice, but it wasn't enough. I think there's a real opportunity, the way that this, this report has been put together really attacks this issue. Our work over the last few years has had a national impact. By creating the Office of, first Office of Recovery Services, we have mayors all across America talking about what's happening in Boston and how do they deal with this issue creating a recovery service toolkit for other cities. And this plan is a model, and Jen Tracy can talk about the amount of people and, and mayors, uh, both here at the conference in, in, in Boston, but over the last couple of years, of people saying, we want that toolkit to see what we can do in our cities. We have worked to approach recovery in its full context, with housing, education, job training. We are putting prevention in full context of neighborhoods and race and poverty and trauma. And the only way to have a long-term impact, it can teach us a lot about the overall well-being of opportunities in our community. So we need to continue to be creative and continue to think outside the box and continue to work collectively together to, to battle this issue. I want to thank Blue Cross Blue Shield again for this funding. When I became the mayor, and I've said this story probably 100 times now, uh, Blue Cross knew my commitment and, and my passion for the recovery community, and the first thing they, they gave us a grant to, to begin the conversation about the Office of Recovery Services. They've been our partners since the very beginning. I want to thank the Oversight Committee and the Youth Advisory Board for your time and commitment, because you are making a difference and you will make a difference. And I want to thank you for sitting for countless numbers of hours and talking about the conversation about where we are today. I want to thank Mass General for helping make this vision a reality. They're doing incredible work in East Boston and Charlestown, and now they're doing it citywide, and they're out there. And I see the van out there, the craft van out there, all over the city of Boston. I want to thank them for their commitment. Uh, we need more partners like Blue Cross Blue Shield and Mass General Hospital. This is just the beginning, and we have a lot of work to do. And I know that the people in this room, as I look around, those older faces I've seen for a while, I used to see you at the State House walking the halls and, and working those areas for, for more money and more treatment and, and looking for a plan. The younger face in this room, I want to thank you for being here today, because this is not the beginning of the fight for you, but this is something that we'll, we'll be working on for a long time, and we need your commitment. We need you to stay here and stay connected and continue to push us and continue to push all of us forward so we have better, better services. Now I have the great honor of introducing um, a graduate of Ostagai Recovery High School. Um, she's from Dorchester like I am. She's in recovery like I am. I should say I'm in a car like she is. I'm from Dorchester like she was. And probably the most important expert speaker here today, uh, Keneela Gresham, who I just met a few minutes ago. Uh, and what struck me, and we only talked literally for about a minute and a half in the other room, what struck me when I saw her was her face. 
Her face is full of confidence. Her face is, you can see, happy. And I'm so honored that she's here today uh, because we are here so that the experience that she went through, that young people will never have to go through that experience. So come on up. Thank you for the introduction. I appreciate it. Um, so my name is Canela. I'm 24 years old. I graduated from Ostagai. I'm going to give you just a quick summary of kind of why I'm up here and why I feel like this is perfect for me. Um, I started smoking weed when I was probably about 14. And today, which is crazy, that's a little old. Um, I thought that was really young looking back, but now it's kind of like the norm. Uh, so I started smoking weed, and that was it. I was a very good student. I was on a roll all the time. I had a very bright future ahead of me. I played sports. I did everything right. Um, I got to middle school, high school, and I plummeted. I went straight down. It was every day, all day. That's all I did. My motivation went down. I was irritable. I was a completely different person. Um, and everyone could like see it, except for me. And um, so I went through all, all of that. I smoked a lot of weed. And for me, looking back now, because I'm a little older, I can kind of look back and look into things a little more and analyze it. And smoking weed was very bad, and it started everything off. But what it really did was introduce me to people that did more things. And before I had met those people, I had always said, I will never do anything else that's crazy, crack, coke, nothing. I'm not doing anything. I hang out with these people, and that's exactly what I'm, what I'm doing. I had a good life at home. My mom cared about me. I had a good sister. Everything was good, except for me. I was, for some reason, I just had this weird void in me that I just felt that smoking weed and doing drugs just, and hanging out with friends, too. I, I was in high school and I had this tunnel vision of like everything that I do in high school is going to follow me forever. And if I don't go to this party, if I don't hang out with this person, what, what's after this? I mean, I'm not going to have any friends. It's crazy because, I mean, we can all relate to this. When you're in high school, it is, this is it. You're locked in this building. Not locked, but you're, you're, <laughs> you're in this building and you kind of just, there's nothing else afterwards. And I never thought about it, too. You know, like the most that I would think about after school, after high school, would be like, oh, I'm going to move in to a really ni nice house with my friends, and we're going to live it up. Like, really? Like, that, that, was, that was life? I mean, it was pretty crazy now that I look back. And so I went to Ostagai because things got way out of hand. And um, today I am more than thankful because Ostagai kind of just railed me in. They railed me in, they gave me the drug test, and you know, I had my little mishaps and stuff, but it was all a, a part of the process. And now I'm better than ever. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I look back and I'm like, I will never. You know, the, the end for me was kind of living out on the street. Why? I'm 17 and I'm living out on the street. I dropped out of school. Why? Because I just didn't want to go anymore? Like, it, it was crazy. There was nothing else. I didn't know what I was going to do in the future. I didn't really care. This was it. This is all I'm going to do, and I'm happy here. Was I really happy? No. But I was content in that moment because I didn't want my mom to tell me what to do. I mean, it's, there's just bigger things in life today. There's such bigger things. And I'm happy that I see that now. And so there was three things that I really wanted to leave you guys with today. The first one being that for me in, in high school and middle school, the main thing that would have helped me would have been communication with my mom. I wish that I had more confidence and trust in her or like our communication lines were open more that I could go to her and tell her things that were happening at school. But everything was cut off. And I, I don't know if it was me or if you know I just didn't want to, I, I, I don't know, let her down. I'm not really sure because she knew what was going on. So I really wish that the communication lines were open. And the second thing was a mentor. So I wish that, so yes, I had counselors and stuff, but I feel that me being a younger person, it was a little difficult for me to open up fully and wholeheartedly to somebody that was a little older. I just felt like they might not have gotten it 
and I feel like it would have been a little better, kind of like a big brother, big sister type thing, to have had somebody there that I trust that isn't gonna just run and tell on, tell on me and you know do all this crazy stuff. So that's number two. And number three, which is kind of far-fetched, but I look back now and I'm like, I wish that I had these resources in school, things like dealing with my taxes, looking into things about like benefits for job. What should I be doing? What should I be looking for? Like I think things that would have helped me in the future because when you get out of school it kind of just smacks you and it's like I have bills, I have all this stuff and you're like I don't even know what to do. You want me to fill out a W2? What do I do with it? I don't know. So I just think like little, it's little things and I feel like that might have got, gotten me a little bit more excited because today especially, I'm sorry if I'm rambling, I'm really oh, sorry. Oh. Um, today especially I work with a lot of not kids, but they're young adults that are graduating from high, from the high school and they're going into their senior year. And when I, when I work with them, I tell them about like, listen, you gotta get your credit score up. Like, you gotta <laughs> apply for these credit cards. Like, what are you thinking about? You know, are you gonna go to school? You know, are you gonna, you want a house? Great, how are you gonna get the house? You know, there's all these things that, and they get excited about it and I'm like, you know, it's just little things. So those three things I wanted to leave you guys with and I appreciate your time. That is all. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you for coming here on your day off. We really appreciate it. Um, Hi everyone, I'm Jen Tracy, Director of the Mayor's Office of Recovery Services. Um, I just wanna say, Almost three years to the date, we um, were at the Dimmick Center uh, announcing and launching the uh, city's first strategic plan and blueprint for a better system of care with our partners, um, some behind me and in front of me, um, to open the Mayor's Office of Recovery Services. So uh, we're two days, two days away, I think, from the official date. So I thank the mayor for his leadership and vision then and now to continue working towards uh, comprehensive uh, strategies across the city of Boston um, with our communities and with our neighborhood. So I'm doing um, the slideshow on the report. And so I'm going to try to go quickly. It's a very uh, long and ex extensive amount of work was done um, in the report to just scratch the surface of us pulling together uh, not only our substance use prevention coalitions and specialists, our treatment community, but other community uh, folks in the violence world, um, trauma, and others that historically um, we really didn't sit down together and have these conversations around substance use, whether it was chronic marijuana use with young people or uh, mom or dad or caregiver coming to pick a young person up um, who maybe is under the influence, and really sitting down and talking um, with all of you here um, around what that means for us in the city of Boston. So. Um, I have a lot of thank yous to do too, so I'm gonna save those to the end. I don't wanna uh, get down the same rabbit hole um, that the mayor started to get down because really every, each and every person here needs to be thanked, um, but we, we couldn't have done this whole process um, without the oversight committee um, and the planning team and our partners at DMA Health Strategies uh, and, and others. So I will um, try to thank everyone at the end. The, um, the report touched on Really, we're gonna walk through what, our, what was our approach, uh, what were our goals, what were some of the activities that we did to get the information. We're gonna focus on some youth and stakeholder feedback because we think that's some of the new and different stuff, but there's a lot of other uh, research and feedback in the report that we won't talk about today. And then just touch on some of the strategic recommendations. Shifting the approach. In the past, substance use prevention has often been fear-based, as the mayor uh, said. Uh, we want to meet young people where they're at. A social determinants approach points us towards the factors that motivate substance use and other risky behaviors and emphasizes a holistic solution to reducing risk factors and strengthening protective factors. I have to say that and read that because that really is, uh, I think, new and different as we move forward with all of uh, the partners here today. We knew that in Boston we wanted our guiding principles to be uh, increasing coordination between city departments and youth serving stakeholders, moving away from silos, and oftentimes funding from federal or state partners comes down um, to us very specifically. It comes down to us in the violence world and in the treatment world and in the prevention world, very specific. And so we wanted to sort of step back and move away from those silos. 
uh, develop strategies in all neighborhoods, work with communities to understand the connection between substance use, trauma, and violence, address youth trauma, mental health, the impact of adverse childhood experiences, and substance use prevent, uh, prevention, to treat youth holistically. Our goals were simple, assess the capacity of our existing system, identify gaps and best practices, and develop actionable recommendations to move forward. We focused on middle and high school age youth with specific consideration to youth that have been left out of the conversation. When the Mayor's Office of Recovery Service launched three years ago, uh, the plan was really focused on accessing care, increasing access to care, and developing strategies across the city to tackle some of the most acute um, issues that we were facing in our city, certainly with the opioid epidemic. But we pivot a little bit today, and uh, we do so with um, the advocacy of our partners, of our prevention partners that are here today, sitting right in front of me, who from the minute we opened the office were knocking on our doors, along with parents and families, telling us uh, at the City of Boston that we needed to do more for youth around substance use. Some of the activities uh, that the project team led um, were the following. It was very important for us to hear from young people, uh, so youth and parent feedback through focus groups and, and parent surveys was very important. Key informant interviews, stakeholder focus groups, uh, we did uh, over 21 key informant interviews and focus groups with specific uh, sectors of the community and youth serving providers, high risk, uh, coalitions, and other youth uh, organizations. We did quantitative data review, uh, using the data that we have available to us, which is the Youth Risk Behavioral Survey data, uh, which is a sample size across Boston Public Schools, and we use some hospital data supported by the Boston Public Health Commission. Review of evidence-based and promising practices across um, nationally, across the city and the state, and uh, did a lot of work with researchers and prevention experts, many of whom are here today. So um, to focus a little bit uh, on youth and stakeholder feedback that received, uh, we received from this report. Again, there's uh, many other findings, uh, but we're just gonna touch on, on this particular stuff in the essence of time. So perspectives from Boston youth. These are young people that were surveyed either in person through focus groups. We did focus groups with our city partners at the Health Commission um, through their peer leadership programs through Boston Center for Youth and Families was um, hosted um, many focus groups as well. We, um, the timing was summer, so we used a lot of their summer job young people uh, to interview. And some of the feedback, and some of this is perceptions of youth, but this is what youth told us. Um, youth, youth voice was important. And themes included many reasons that youth use substances, some of which Keneela just re referenced in, in her speaking. A big one was thinking their peers used to relax, feel good, and have fun. It doesn't sound earth shattering, but it's important for us to focus on um, what young people are saying and it, give people the information to tackle, to tackle that where they're at. A high percentage of youth also um, perceive that other youth may use or are under the influence at school. So there was a lot of concern from young people about what their peers were, were doing um, and what they were seeing in their communities and, and in their schools. We also asked young people where they get and want to receive information about drugs and alcohol. Overwhelmingly, their response was that they do receive or they want to receive or think it's a good place to receive that information at school and also with their friends and family. We have many young people in Boston that do not use substances, of course, and for the, but for those that do or know peers that do, they report using a range of substances. Uh, marijuana, alcohol, over-the-counter, codeine or lean, um, and more than they use prescription opioids. And we make that statement here today just not to diminish the uh, climate today around opioids, but to say it out loud, uh, particularly for communities of colors who um, in many cases have been struggling with heroin for uh, over 25 years. I have a report actually from Rita Nieves when she was the director at the Health Commission um, and I worked at the state 2004 Boston's heroin uh, problem, uh, requesting help from the state at that time. So we've been struggling for a long time um, and many communities are feeling left out of this 
current conversation and wondering um, where we've been all these years. So we, um, you know, scanned the city looking at existing prevention capacity and looked at key city departments and key community partners. Um, you see them here. Good work is happening in pockets. We need coordination among these agencies. We need identified leader or point agency to guide everyone's efforts. And we need to expand to include the entire city. Some neighborhoods have historically not been involved in these conversations around substance use um, in the past. So the stakeholders, many of you are here, um, guided much of the recommendations. This was a process that we did over a year's time, getting feedback from all these various groups and um, holding meetings specifically with the stakeholders. I'm not gonna go through um, all of these. It's all in the report, but to save time, um, I'm gonna pass over some of this. But um, you'll see that coordination is a big piece, and that's a big piece of what the Office of Recovery Service has been able to do um, across the city of Austin in the treatment world, and we're excited to uh, play that role in the prevention world as well. So um, a need for more equitable distribution and access to prevention resources, and creating a referral network in addition to building the capacity of existing organizations, really thinking about race, juvenile justice, and substance use. Um, and where that plays a role in the conversation, where it's been missing and where there's work to do. Uh, marijuana legalization and its impact on youth. Um, we are all very concerned uh, about the current climate, the perceptions out there, uh, the increase or decrease in perception of harm that young people are reporting. And uh, these are things that we need to tackle. I'm just gonna zip through those. So this feedback plus um, extensive research brings us to strategic recommendations. Again, there's a quite lengthy recommendations in the report that we hope um, to, that will serve as a roadmap for community organizations, um, community coalitions, and us together um, with all of you. Uh, but I'm just gonna say the five buckets of the recommendations. Expand leadership and coordination. Increase prevention work in all city agencies. Use consistent messaging improve pathways to care and engage with academic and other philanthropic organizations. This really is the first time the city has stepped back to take a look at efforts across neighborhoods and the recommendations are a guideline for all of us moving forward. Um, I think that I might just go through this. Um, the goal here, the first goal, expand leadership. This really is the city keeping its own house in order. Increase capacity at our level. Um, the mayor has invested in, the, in the, this year's budget that just got passed. Um, clearly shows his commitment for us moving forward with this goal um, to expand leadership and coordination and we thank him for that. Um, Dr. Slavin will also speak to um, how we can't do it alone and the important roles that our partners can play um, and we need them to play and we thank Mass General for being here um, and we call other, others uh, to the table to join us. Goal two is increase prevention work in all city agencies. Um, really how to talk, talk with youth and their care caregivers about substance use to equip our uh, city agency partners like our Boston Center for Youth and Families, our Boston Public Schools, and other uh, divisions within our Health Commission with the tools to do that. Use consistent messaging. The concept is simple. Give people the tools to talk about substance use and educate the public. And well, four, the earlier we intervene, the better chance a person has for success. So improve all pathways to care and make, pe make sure people have that information. And goal five, um, as I said, really ask partners to come to the table with us to do research in areas um, around equity that hasn't been done before with young people and substance use um, and um, and just reiterate that we cannot do this alone. We need good, reliable data, public and private partners to reach the next level in the city of Boston. So um, thank you. That is the 50 plus on report in a nutshell. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> Um, I have the pleasure of, of introducing someone next. I, if the, um, I think if we could just have a, 
if you'll bear with me, the a show of hands of the Oversight Committee, um, David and you know Dick and, and Leslie and others that worked hours and hours and hours and hours on this. I want to thank them for that. Um, my staff, Brendan Little, um, who I can't do anything without um, his guidance and vision. Um, certainly our partners at the, the other city agencies, the Center for Youth and Families for hosting and guiding us. And, Monica Valdez Lupi at the um, Public Health Commission and her team, um, and Boston Public Schools, who is here. Um, we have uh, Pat and Jill, I think, is here too. Thank you. Um, and Amalio Nieves. State partners, Jose Morales, the director of prevention at the state level, um, is here. And I thank you for that, and many others. So I started by saying three years ago, um, today, almost to the date, we were at the Dimmick Center announcing the Mayor's Office of Recovery Services and the first strategic plan for the City of Boston around addiction and recovery. And with us there and every step of the way has been um, Audrey Shelto from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts Foundation. She was there then supporting the work that the Mayor did through his vision for the year leading up to it. Um, and she's here now and has supported us in this work. So it's my pleasure to introduce Audrey Shelto. Thank you, Jen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, um, and thank you, Mayor Walsh and Chief Martinez, for inviting me to be part of this event. Um, many of you know probably that the mission of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation is expanding access to health care for low income and vulnerable populations. And five years ago, we decided to really focus on the area of behavioral health, mental health, and substance use disorder uh, services and the access to those. So our focus has been very, very much aligned with that of the mayor um, when he came into office. And that's what prompted us. Uh, in 2014 to partner with the city to help them really assess the treatment world, identify gaps, and, and do the roadmap and establish the first in the country Office of Recovery Services. So we were really excited to be part of that and then more recently tremendously thrilled to be able to um, participate in this effort to focus on prevention. Um, <clears throat> we are we were honored to be part of this uh, coalition that, of stakeholders that have worked on this. Collaboration and knowledge sharing, sort of convening like that, is a lot of the way that we do our work at the foundation. So this was such a great, um, great partnership to be um, involved in. Um, the results of the report that Jen just went over are really data-driven, and that's one of the things that's really exciting. Um, these are, uh, this report is grounded in facts. There is nothing fake in here. <laughs> um, it's healthcare utilization data, it's compelling public health survey data, which reflects the voice of kids, parents, and the community. And I think it's really important that the recommendations are grounded in that really, um, th those important facts. But I think also the data, when you read the report, if you haven't already, paints a much more nuanced picture of um, youth substance use, which is kind of hard to say, youth <laughs> substance use, um, than what we often see portrayed in the headlines. You know, it really is, as as um, Jen was talking about and the mayor was talking about, it really isn't an isolated issue. It's so much intertwined with all the other issues that we now call social determinants of health. You know, so many of the other issues that are related to poverty. So it's really important and I'm really excited to see in this report that the approach is really cross um, sector, you know, collaborative, really bringing a lot of organizations together and sectors together to try to address this issue. Um, and I love the fact that the um, report, as Khalila, you were, uh, you were re referencing this um, the importance of messaging and communication and you know how do we talk with each other whether it's parents and kids or organizations in the city or whatever but how do we talk about this in a in a more um, uh, you know constructive way so we really at the foundation we really applaud the city for continuing on and putting together a strategy that encourages providers to um, collaborate with each other that en encourages new entrants to this field new providers coming in to focus on the areas the parts of the city or the populations that maybe haven't been getting attention in the past we're really excited about that I would just add that as a person who's worked on um, health care and human services in this city for over 30 years, and I have to admit also, um, on, and honestly, as a mother and as a grandmother, I know these issues are really hard to address. Um, as this report so well describes, substance use is related to so many other uh, issues that kids are you know, challenged by. Um, and, and as uh, I think the chief referenced earlier and the mayor referenced, when you have limited resources, it's really hard to put them in prevention when there's so many treatment needs. But we as adults really owe it to the kids of our city. Um, we can help them have a better life and we can have, help them have a better future. So again, I really applaud the mayor and his team for their continued focus on these issues. 
The foundation's honored to have helped this launch important initiative, as, as I said, and to be here um, with those who will move it forward. So it's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. P Peter Slavin, President and CEO of Mass General Hospital, who's been a leader, I can tell you personally, from work I've done over the years and from uh, all, many of my colleagues in the room, a leader in substance use disorder prevention and treatment and has led so many community-based initiatives throughout the city. So I'm really honored to introduce Dr. Peter Slavin. I want to thank a couple of people to, uh, to start. Uh, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank Keneela for sharing her story with us. Uh, you were a remarkably articulate young woman. And, uh, and, uh, and I think your story just inspires all of us to work even that much harder to uh, prevent uh, youth from heading down the road that you initially uh, traveled. And, but it's, it's great to see you in recovery and, and doing, doing so well. Uh, I want to uh, thank the, the mayor and his, uh, his team for putting so much focus uh, on this uh, important issue from the, uh, the instant that he was uh, inaugurated into uh, this position here in the city. Uh, we have, uh, this is uh, the biggest uh, public health uh, epidemic facing the people of this uh, region and it's wonderful to see our uh, city government uh, so focused and committed to trying to stem the tide of, uh, of addiction and, and make, uh, make progress uh, against it. <coughs> I want to thank my colleagues, uh, Joan Quinlan, Leslie Aldrich, and Matt uh, Fishman, uh, who uh, have, have worked so hard to, uh, to advance our efforts uh, across Partners Healthcare and at Mass General to, uh, to contribute to the efforts in this, this community. And I want to thank our colleagues from uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield for funding this strategic plan and the uh, incredible number of volunteers across the city who came together to, uh, to put together such a thoughtful and, uh, and uh, deliberate uh, plan. Uh, no, but now the hard work really begins, uh, taking that plan and putting it into uh, to action, and uh, and that's uh, where we're we're committed to uh, to working with you and uh, and making a difference. Uh, for the last several years, we at Mass General, have, as the largest hospital in this region, have been focused on trying to make a difference in the lives suffering from this addiction. We see far too many people in our emergency room with uh, overdoses. We now not only help them recover from their acute uh, uh, overdose, but are working really hard to get them into recovery, get them the medical treatment they need, and follow them longitudinally with a consult service, a bridge clinic, and a number of uh, recovery coaches. But the best way to treat uh, addiction is to prevent it uh, first uh, uh, First of all, and and, uh, and that's what we would like to uh, to see. And so, uh, so I'm pleased to announce today that we're uh, committing $1.3 million uh, to the city to invest in this plan and, uh, and help make it clear. It's clearly going to take an uh, increasing number of coalitions across this uh, city and different neighborhoods to come together and, and figure out how best to, uh, to address this issue and keep youth on, on the right uh, path. Uh, and, but, and hopefully our resources can help uh, advance those efforts across the city and also help the city uh, keep a closer eye uh, through measurement on what's uh, the patterns uh, that are emerging uh, across the city. Uh, before I end, I just want to say one other thing that we're doing to try to uh, help the youth of this area and, and also uh, help uh, with, with this addiction issue but through prevention. Uh, I, I, about a month, about a year ago, I met with uh, Joan and Leslie to talk about this year's summer jobs uh, program at Mass General Hospital, uh, and they told me uh, how many summer jobs we had the previous year, and I asked them, well, how, how many would we need to have in order to be the largest employer of youth in the city <laughs> this upcoming summer? And I'm pleased to say that we are proud to now be the home of 250 youth uh, <laughs> in, in Boston. Yeah, but, the largest of any employer in the city, and I hope we can get a friendly competition going among some of the other large employers, uh, setting the bar higher and higher because the youth of the city need uh, exposure to uh, employment within our, our institutions, businesses within this community, and I think that's one of the most important things that we can do to provide to prevent them from heading down a different, uh, less, uh, much more dangerous path. So again, I want to thank the mayor for his leadership. Thank all of you for helping getting to get us to this point. Uh, but there's uh, the hard work really. A lies ahead and we at Mass General are committed to partnering with all of you to uh, help get that work done. Thank you.
So thank you for those of you who are interested in the report itself. It will be on our city website uh, and widely distributed, and we're excited to hear about the recommendations that you want to take and implement with our help. Again, thank you to Dr. Slavin. Thank you, Mayor Walsh. Thank you all for being here, and have a great day.